Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Richard. Today we're going to be talking about the Triumph Scrambler 400X. I bought this five weeks ago and this is a quick summary of the 400X over the last uh, five weeks. Uh, done a couple of long trips, we're going to talk about that. Done lots of short trips, done a little few changes onto the bike such as the 15 tooth sprocket, put a rack on the bike with a jivvy mono key plate uh, which allows the uh, top box to go on onto the bike to carry all the uh, stuff that we carry in our lives today uh, but let's crack on i've got a few things we can talk about and if you're thinking about buying a, a scrambler 400x either brand new <clears throat> for 5600 700 pound is it or, se or second hand, probably about the £4,700 mark at this moment in time, on the understanding it's September 2024 when this video is being created. Uh, let's have a chat. Let's have a chat about what items I've noted down in no particular order. In no particular order. Right, so we'll take it from there. Right, let's crack on. Cool factor. Lots of people look at this, uh, and not necessarily the young. It's generally speaking, more, you know, people aged 35, 40 and above. People look at this, and they're interested in it. Uh, it's a great bike from a cool factor perspective. Uh, it is a fun bike. It's it do, because it's Triumph. It catches the attention, and people are curious about it being. A single cylinder 400cc rather than the bigger ones uh, that people may be used to. The cool factor is out of one from one to ten I would probably say about a seven whereas my Triumph T120 is certainly up in the nines 9.5 that's a real cool factor bike. <clears throat> it's got a pleasant exhaust now all the way through the rev range it's uh, this this bike is generally speaking standard i haven't adjusted the exhaust i have no intentions of adjusting the exhaust i don't want to make it any louder i'm not bothered about making it any quieter i'll just leave it as standard uh, and this is my bike as well the, you know i'm just making it sure i bought this as the winter hike for the winter of 2024 2025 in the uk so exhaust now very nice. Lights at night. Uh, I believe they're LED and I find them okay. I find I hear comments of people that say that they're not very good. I find them okay. I find the dip and the high beam okay. The only thing to note is the switch. Normally on a Triumph with the switch being here to switch dip to high beam, you normally pull it towards yourself like that, like a trigger. On this, it's not the case. When you want to switch, switch to high beam, you push it forward like that. Okay. Took me a few days to figure that out because I was going like that and it just, all it does is flash. You have to push the switch forward. Just take note on that. I find the lighting at night Okay, I don't do much riding at night, so it doesn't really bother me, but I found it okay. It's not particularly brilliant, but motorcycles were never brilliant regarding lighting. You've only got one headlamp and only so much uh, ampage going to that headlamp. So it is what it, it is what it is. Suspension. The front suspension is great. The rear suspension is even better. There's no adjustment There's a, on the front. There is adjustment on the back. Uh, what is it currently at? It's currently at its third point. It's currently at its third point out of one, two, three, four, five, probably about eight or nine positions. It's currently in its third position from lowest. Uh, no problems. The suspension on this bike is absolutely wonderful. Using that setting, I've also had a pillion on the back uh, where the total weight for me and the pillion was probably about 23 stone. Uh, 
absolutely fine. The handling, when you've got a lot of weight on the bike, absolutely no difference. It's absolutely great. So, you know, riding solo at 13 stone, absolutely fine. Riding pillion with 23 stone on the bike, absolutely fine as well. And the engine copes easily with a pillion of 10 stone. I'm just saying, yeah. So if you're worried about the 40 horsepower, I would probably not be too concerned if it was me. I wouldn't be too concerned. Maybe you want to go and test ride one and then get someone on the bike just to make sure and allay your fears uh, regarding the 40 horsepower. It's got plenty of it, plenty enough power and uh, it pulls like a train. Brakes. Front brake is absolutely fine. It's exactly what you'd expect. The rear brake is better than usual. This is also set for the Indian market. Uh, and because Indians ride with the rear brake rather than Europeans riding with the front brake, the rear brake is strong. So that's a good thing. Uh, the reason why the rear, the rear brake is strong in India is because most of, the, uh, most of the roads that people ride in India are not tarmac. So they are rough roads, uh, and that's why they ride with the rear brake. If you, you know, if you ride in ride in rough roads uh, on uh, on the front brake, then you're bound to lose the front end. That's why they ride in with the rear brake over in India. The bike has been designed to be ca uh, compatible with Indian riding. Uh, tires. These are the standard tires that come with the bike, and they are. Uh, Metzler Carew Street. Metzler Carew Street. You get a lot of people, you know, these professional reviewers that say these tyres aren't particularly good or reassure. There's not much reassurance on the road as you go around the corner. That's unadulterated bunkum. These tyres are great. Now, either... I can ride better than the reviewers or or something or they're just pulling up a point they're just saying something these tires are wonderful on the street don't worry about that don't don't think you're gonna have to change the, these Metzlers out not that's not the case at all not the case at all these tires are great always make sure your tires at the right pressure and then the handling will be fine yeah, always, and obviously always give them time to warm up. The chain is solid. I haven't had to adjust my chain. I've done about, I've owned this bike for about five, five weeks now. I've done about 600, 700 miles on it. Um, high speed uh, down the motorway and all that good stuff. And typical riding around the A roads and B roads of the UK. Uh, the chain seems to be very solid. Uh, I suspect that it would be advantageous to upgrade the chain and sprockets uh, to a set of DIDs uh, if you're thinking about keeping this long term because I suspect through the winter this chain, having come from India, will start to rust. I, I suspect that will be the case. But we'll wait and see as the winter comes in 2024-2025. But to date... I've had no problems with the chain. I'm using the typical spray can to lubricate it every 300 miles. And it's working fine. It's just working fine. I've not needed to adjust it from a stretch perspective. The bike comes with a 15, uh, sorry, a 14 tooth front sprocket. Uh, that makes the gearing for first, second and third, and probably fourth, very, very low. So when you set off, you're like first, second, third, and it's like before you know it, you're doing 31 mile an hour in sixth gear. I've changed the 14, stu uh, 14 tooth sprocket to a 15 tooth, and that has addressed all the problems. There is a video in here that I'll put in the description uh, to show you how to do that. Uh, based on the 1980s, we don't have special expensive tools, way of doing it. Um, and there's uh, another video that shows us testing the outcome of the 15 tooth sprocket. 
I would highly recommend for 90% of your riding that you upgrade to the 15 tooth sprocket. They cost about 16 or 17 pounds from eBay and whatever. I'll put the link in the description to where you can buy it as an example. Uh, or I'll put a flash up here right now of what I paid and then you can go and order it, yeah? Clocks and instruments. The instruments are very basic, uh, but they do do the job. Um, the ref counter on the instrument panel is irrelevant. You just can't read it, or maybe it's my eyesight. Uh, you just can't read it. So take a note of what the, the noise the engine's making, and then you'll figure it out. It does have a limiter on it. When it gets up to about 9,500 RPM, it starts coughing. Mm, that's fine. Uh, but just make aware, just make a note of that. There is also a USB charger on the right hand side of the instrument panel to charge your, to charge your phone or anything like that. Any technology on the, uh, on the handlebars that you put in, you can charge it from that uh, USB socket. Range. So, the tank holds 13 litres of fuel, which is, in my world, about 2.9 gallons. So let's round that up to 3 gallons. So it does 80 miles per gallon. So that's 80 times 3, which is 240, uh, minus 20, because it's 2.9, minus 20. So it does about 220 per time, which is really, really good. I found doing motorway work, it was doing about 73 to the gallon. So that's not bad at 70, 75 mile per hour. The seat for me is super comfortable. I did a 360 round trip journey the other day in one day, and the seat is absolutely great. Of course, your legs are gonna be aching. Everybody's legs are gonna be aching after 300 miles. Uh, but generally speaking, the day after I felt fine. So I could have rode from Stafford down to Dover, caught the ferry over into Calais and gone to the eastern side of Calais, stopped off in a hotel, woke up the next day and done another three or four hundred miles on the motorways. Yep. So this does offer a potential touring seat. You could get into Europe for those that are on A2 licenses and because of your age and things like that, you could tour into Europe on this. Do consider that. Vibrations. Don't get any vibrations except when it get. and this is with the 15 tooth sprocket, except when it gets to about 70 mile an hour. And then as you push through 70 mile an hour to 75 mile an hour, all the vibrations disappear. Take note of that. So there's no vibrations in the handlebars at all. There's, I only noticed a vibration in the right foot peg at 70 mile an hour. And when you push through to 75 mile an hour, the vibration in the right foot peg disappears. So if you're touring down into Europe, I think you're gonna be okay. I think you're gonna be okay. <clears throat> the side stand, the angle of the side stand is absolutely perfect. On the understanding that it's quite a tall bind, yeah, I'm five foot ten with a thirty foot thirty inch leg, and I'm sort of tippy toe on both feet, uh, and I'm happy with that. Uh, but taking it off the side stand is very very easy. If you want to know what is not easy to take off the side stand, go and sit on the uh, sit on the Himalayan four fifty uh, from Royal Enfield. Try taking that off the side stand. It really is a struggle getting it off the side stand. I don't know how Royal Enfield, I don't, I don't know how it got through their, you know, their governance or quality assurance process of having such a short, um, sh 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 such a short side stand or the angle of the stand is very uh, loose, whatever. The side stand is great. It's got a 40 horsepower engine power. 40 horsepower engine. The power is linear all the way through. It's absolutely wonderful. You can chug the engine or you can race it. It doesn't matter. Of course, it then gets up to nine and a half thousand RPM and then the limiter comes in and it starts coughing. Okay, that's fine. But 
40 horsepower seems great. Single riding, uh, solo riding, uh, with a pillion rider. Of course, it's going to work harder, but it seems to be great as well. You know, with a pillion rider, I have no problem with doing 70 or 80 mile an hour. No problems at all. None at all. The gearbox is a six speed gearbox <clears throat> and it is super slick. The gearbox ac action is super slick. If you're on the 14th tooth sprocket, you will be changing gear from first, second and third within a few, a few yards. So hence the 15 tooth sprocket. So, but it is a super slick gearbox. I've had no false neutrals. I've had no issues finding neutral from first or second. No issues at all. Absolutely wonderful. Handling, absolutely perfect. Either solo or two up. Absolutely perfect. It's had lots of weight in the top box at the back. So there's lots of, you know, the center of gravity is raised eye with all this pillion and so and the rider and the top box. Absolutely fine. It rides like a dream. Uh, and with these tires, we mentioned the tires earlier, Going around the corners is no problem at all. Not a problem, even with a pillion. I hope this is meaning something to you. Insurance costs. I'm 57, I live in a nice area. It's a quiet area. The insurance for me on this was 117 pound fully comp with something like 150 pound excess in total. So it's very cheap to insure, certainly for me. It may not be for you based on your age or based on where you live and all that good stuff. You know, I'm just saying, 117 pounds the insurance for the uh, fully comp. So it's great, it's cheap. Of course, I have nine years no claims or a million years no claims, but you can only put nine years through the online system. So it is what it is. Servicing is every 10k. This bike currently has something like 2,700 miles on it. And it's coming up to winter. I do intend to perform a, an oil change prior to winter. I know it's had an oil change this year. I know that the bike is only sort of six or seven months old. But I think I might just swap out that oil. It's the cheapest way of looking after your engine. It costs 50 pound at most. So I might do that. I'll create a video on that at some point in the future before the winter really sets in. But the service interval, as I understand, is every 10,000 mile. So if you're into stretching it to 10,000 mile, there you go, 10,000 mile. Price as second hand, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, you should be able to get one of these for about 4,700 with probably very little mileage on it. Uh, it's up to you. They come with a two year warranty and that warranty is transferable. Uh, if it's under a year old, you also have breakdown cover and recovery and all that good stuff for Europe. So and that's for year one from its, uh, from its registration. So just bear that in mind. 4,700. I guess the person that's going to buy this is going to be looking after it. If you know, it's not like, uh, I can't imagine many 25 year olds buying it and racing it around the streets. I'm, I'm, I'm stereotyping now. So I'm guessing the person that's going to buy this is not going to be thrashing it. I'm guessing on the 80 20 rule, 80% of the time they'll not be thrashing it. Next, accessories. On this one, <clears throat> I got the, uh, I got the rack for uh, the monarchy. Jiffy Play uh, to put my top, top box on. The right cost £81, no £90, £90 from uh, AliExpress and the rack is great. Of course it comes from China, but whatever. Most things come from China now. Uh, it's really, really strong and it takes the weight of my 48 litre, I think it's 48 litre, Jiffy Monarchy top box. I had not had a problem. Not had a problem at all. Uh, the GV Monarchy mount plate costs £42. That's off eBay. You can easily find it. 
Uh, I know most of the riders tend to use monokey rather than the mono lock with the kappa stuff. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That was that. Uh, any other any any other things that were put on? I've got the Carpure Ride navigation system on here, but that's that. I also went and got a generic screen, a Puig 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 screen P U I G for seventy eight pound on it uh, for seventy eight pound on eBay. Waste of time. The the fitments that go into the headlamp, absolute waste of time. It was just something generic, and it just does not fit. So. I will be returning that very soon, uh, and I'm also in touch with the guys that sold it, mate, and they're they're absolutely fine. Uh, so I will be returning that, and I will be ordering uh, a specific one from Triumph, a screen from Triumph. Uh, I would prefer a screen because this will be used on the motorways to get to wherever I'm touring to, in the UK or maybe even abroad over to uh, over to Europe. I wouldn't think twice about touring this in Europe, if that's what you're thinking. So if you're 25 and you're on an A2 license or whatever the ages are now, is it 23 or 21? If you're on an A2 license and you can only afford one of these or what, whatever, let's say, let's assume that you're restricted to this kind of machine. Could you go touring? Yes, you can. So if I was going touring, I would put my 48 litre top box on the bike. I would put my Oxford 50 litre roll bike on the back seat in front of the top box, strap it all up and then get off to the Alps. There you go. And this will cruise all day at 75 mile an hour. And will return something like 73 miles per gallon, imperial gallons. Yes. So just have a think about that. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. And I hope this meant something to you. If you're thinking about getting the 400X. I bought it as a hack for the winter. Coming winter. And I think I've made a great choice. Uh, it's a great bike. Uh, I would really consider this. Or maybe the Speed 400. Uh I think it's a great bike, and if you're thinking about buying one, go to your dealer, go and test ride one, and I think you'll enjoy it. But take into account that when the dealer allows you to test ride one of their bikes, it's probably got a 14 tooth sprocket on it, and after you've done 20 yards, you're already in third gear. Then you can have a word with the dealer about buying the bike, but have it upgraded to a 15 tooth sprocket so it stretches stretches the gears out a bit more. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like. Comments below if you've already got one, if you're thinking about getting one, have you had one and sold it because you didn't have a great experience? Comment below. Let's, uh, let's get talking about this. Absolutely great bike. I'm not sure the Royal Enfield Gorilla is a competition for it. I think this is much more of a premium machine than the Gorilla, although I do like the Gorilla, but I do think this is a bit more of a premium machine, less agricultural, shall we say. So I hope this was useful. Ride safely, be kind to everyone, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.